This is something that we absolutely believe in something and then live accordingly. We say we believe this book. Well, our faith says, well, prove it. So we go to church, we give our times and our talents to the Lord, and then we walk accordingly as we've been instructed to as children of God or servants. So we have to do it, and if somebody says, well, why do you do what you do? Well, it's the right thing to do. It's what we have been given instructions to do. So many people have different reasons. But we know that to get into the family of God, it takes faith. Faith to believe in someone you have not seen. You wasn't there. You were represented, but you were not there. You didn't get to look upon the cross and say, yep, there he is. And uh, he's already told us he loved us. And he's literally taken upon him sin that he could pay the fullness of that. So we wasn't there, so we accept it. We believe it, and then we literally respond according to that faith. So with that in mind, let's look at Hebrews chapter 11, uh, verse number 1. When you have found your place, let's stand together for the reverence of God's precious and holy word. Living by faith, not just having faith, but living we do what we do because faith has given us the belief so much that we enact upon it. Look in verse 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Now that's a, that's a good description. Now he says, for by it the elders obtained a good report. Through faith we understand the worlds were framed by the word of God. So if you ever have a problem, how did we get here? Because God said it and God spoke it into existence. He said, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. By faith Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained... Witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and by it he being dead yet speaketh. Well, let's read two more verses. By faith Enoch was translated, now watch this, that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him for before his translation he had this testimony that he pleased God. I hope that's our testimony. Now, here's a, a verse that we can build on. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So if we could get anything out of this service tonight, understanding that by faith, living faith, we can absolutely please God. And I'm put here not only to please him, but to serve him and be a light and inspiration of everything that he's given us. Let's ask the Lord to help us tonight. Father, we're grateful again for each and every one that's here. We pray in Jesus' name that you'll touch the lives and Lord, those that are watching and listening and especially those that are here, I implore your blessings, Lord, that they might be moved and stirred and, and allow God's holy word to encourage and help because in these days, these trying days, we do need something more. So it's so wonderful to be comforted by the word of God. There are some stern warnings that you have given us through the scriptures that we need to take heed to, but most of all, to build a testimony, to build a foundation upon that which Christ has laid. I do hope and pray, dear God, that we'll walk in the Spirit, that we might be most pleasing in your sight. Thank you again. I pray that you would touch the lives of all those that's on the prayer list, that you might minister to them, send comfort. 
It was wonderful to hear the good news about Logan, and we're thrilled and honored that there's some great things happening. So please, dear God, touch each one. Help us as we try to minister one to another. Now help us tonight. I pray you'll have your will and way in this service, and I pray that you'd speak to us and through us. Help us, please, for we ask it in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen and amen. Thank you for your standing. I wanted to tile this living by faith because that's exactly where we're at. That's what we're doing We've gotten born into the family of God by faith, according to Ephesians 2. So we got birth into the family, something we didn't see take place. I've never seen a new birth experience. We've seen the characteristics after it's happened, the life change. But we've not physically seen that take place. And I'm glad with it. It's probably be more than what our hearts could comprehend and understand. But understanding that living faith is something that's alive, it's working in our hearts, we can have faith as we just read the Word of God. We had faith when we wanted to get birthed into the family of God because we know it's for by grace through faith. So that got us going, that got us started. But it didn't stop. It began to work in the lives of the believers so faith is exactly the things that we do that we cannot see physically, but we understand that we enact upon what we know to be the truth. All through this chapter, you'll find things that was just almost unbelievable at what people did by faith to serve God, even those that were dying for their faith. They literally would not, refute Jesus. They wanted to enthrone him. If you've ever read the Fox's Book of Martyrs, it's a hard book to read. It's very painful. And yet, on the same frame, it's encouraging because the stories that are given about the people in old times, boy, they had faith to believe no matter what, we're not going to turn against God, even if it's for saving our lives. Let me tell you about one story I remember in there. I believe if I'm correct, it was about three missionaries, or at least preachers, that were fixed to be burned at the stake because of their ministry. They begin to talk one of another. Boy, this is going to be something that's kind of yet fearful in one respect, but Let's, let's make a little deal between us three that if the fire starts on you before us, let's give one another a sign that there's dying grace. We preach it, we proclaim it, but we would like to know that there is grace even in the struggle of the end of life. Well, when they were put on their poles with the fire was going to be built around it, they looked at one another and they thought, how can we give a signal? Our hands are tied behind us. We're tied to the stake and we can't signal. They couldn't lift up their legs because they were tied. So they thought, well, uh, I guess we'll go through this and we won't be able to signal one another. Without being too graphic, I'll just tell you that as the fire started consuming the wood in the post, that the ropes were absolutely being burned behind them. And, of course, that wasn't all that was being burned. But the men, in their dying faith, was able to raise what they had, which was basically a nub, and was waving to the others that there was dying grace. The joy of happiness of knowing that no matter what was taking place in those dark ages and the suffering and the fear, not only did they start with faith, but they lived by faith and then they died by faith. So it's a wonderful picture to know this is not all there is. Many times we wonder, 
I sure hope there's more than what we've been told on the other side. Well, I can assure you a lot of people have left this life over the many, many years, and they've left and went into the presence of God. That's a promise that God has given to us. He didn't say if you're good enough or you live righteous enough, you can, you can come home to be with me. He said you must be born again. So the new birth promises you a place with God, and all this is by faith. Why? Because the Word of God, as some people in the world say, it's just a book that's been recorded by men. But my Bible tells me it's inspired by God. It's absolutely been given to us as a roadmap, instruction manual for the people of the world that don't know God, how they can find Him. And then for we that are born again, it gives us the ability to understand how should we live in this present world. So tonight, looking at these scriptures, if you remember that we just read in verse 1, it'll give us our first thought. The definition of faith. Faith is a topic that's dealt with extensively in the Bible. It is found over 200 times throughout the scriptures. In our text, what we was reading tonight, it gives the definition of faith. It says the substance of things. Now, substance usually has something with substance. He said it's the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Many view faith as something that is mystic, elusive. Sometimes we talk about it, but we don't grasp a hold on exactly what it means. But they have difficulty trying to define or really grasp on, I can explain the portal of faith and the foundation of faith, but it's hard in detail to give an analysis of faith. Hopefully a more depth look at this definition will help us hopefully and prayerfully better understand. Let me give you two thoughts about the definition of faith. The word substance in the text means the foundation, the assurance, or the guarantee. It was a legal term that spoke of a document that revealed ownership like a piece of property. We would refer it today as a title deed that shows it's something that belongs. Faith is the foundation. It is the very, listen, the very assurance that's guaranteed to us. The title deed gives us things to hope for. We hear the word hope a lot in the Bible. Uh, in hope of eternal life, which God that cannot lie promise before the world began. So hope is something very unique and special, and it goes hand in hand with the word faith. The word evidence speaks of proof or conviction. Faith is the proof that you and I need or the conviction of things that exist that are not seen. Some people have told me to, uh, to my face that I don't believe anything I can't see. I said, well, here, take a screwdriver and stick it in this outlet. You, you're not going to see it, but you're going to experience it. I said, well, then you need to stop breathing because you can't see air. You might see smog, but you can't see air. So I said, so your statement is not entirely true. So the word evidence is us to look upon faith, and it demands further proof that you and I have something that truly exists. Faith accepts the truths of God as proof. You say, well, it's recorded, but it's recorded as truth. And our faith says, I totally agree. Faith provides the conviction and assurance of the promises of God. We would do no justice to our text to define faith as the assured guarantee of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. So consider the thoughts of some Bible scholars and commentaries. I've wrote down three or four things that I found. One said, faith means that we are certain 
of the things we hope for. I like that. We're convinced of the things we do not see. I didn't see the writers, nor have I met them. But I've met them through the analogy of their writings that God literally expressed through them. Faith is a hope that is absolutely certain that what it believes is true and that what it expects will come. Can I give you that one? Jesus said, if I go, I will come again. Now, your faith says, I believe that. So in the blessed hope, we look for the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. We look. We expect him to come. We've been hoping and praying for all these years that he would come in our lifetime so we would not have to visit any more cemeteries and funeral homes. Faith is something that we cannot see, but we have assurance that it exists. Listen, it is not trust in the unknown, for we may know by faith and be assured of. What we cannot see with the eye, we believe. Another said, faith is trust in the unseen. It is not trust in the unknown because you can't believe it if it's not known. For we may know by faith what we cannot see with the physical eye. Some people have called faith the third eye, something that we don't physically have. It's our senses that tells us something is right and true. Another one said, faith apprehends as a real fact what is not revealed to your senses. It rests on facts, acts upon it, and is upheld by it. And in the face of all that it seems to contradict, for it's hard to explain, faith is seeing ability. It helps me to see past my senses. Another Bible commentary defines faith as, and I'm going to read this slow because it's kind of a long statement. The substance the actual possessing, possession of things hoped for, the evidence and reality of things not seen. It is both an act and a possession of the things believed. You read it and you take it into your heart as yours and truth. You can't build a life on falsehoods. You can't build a case on something that doesn't stand true. It is both an act and a possession of the things believed. Genuine faith rests in the providence and the sovereignty of God, holding faith in higher esteem than those tangible things we can hold in our hands. Genuine faith is more absolute. People say there are no absolutes. I beg to differ. And it's very certain that which is seen held, and even felt. I witnessed to a man one day that told me there were no absolutes. I knew where he was going. I said, well, you're absolutely going to die one day. He said, well, that's different. That's not what I'm referring to. And then I said, and even if you pass away today, the sun will absolutely shine tomorrow, even if you're not here. And I said, the wind will be there for you is blowing somewhere on the earth 24-7. He said, well, how do you know? I said, honestly, has anybody ever been to Oklahoma or Kansas? All right, that should be called the kite flying state because that's exactly what we did. As a matter of fact, Brother Sammy, they sold kites with rod and reels. So you could control them, let them out, because they grew, uh, literally they'd go out so fast, they would burn if you were trying to hold the string in your hands. So we had rod and reels about that long. All you had to do was get it ready, mash the button. You didn't have to do this. All you had to do was mash the button, and man, that kite would go almost out of sight. I thought, now that's pretty good, having a rod and reel attached to a kite. Man, we didn't have kite races, because it took forever to get them back down when you got ready to go. 
things that you cannot feel and see, yet we believe. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. The commentaries have basically got it absolutely correct. It appears you could just about explain a lot of things about faith that would obsoletely make the belief of humanity of non-effect. But it takes faith today to believe, and not only this, let's just go out on a limb. It would take real faith to believe in evolution. I have seen people try to put together the missing links and say that this is how it all transpired and took place. I was watching a documentary one day this week and it talked about a particular lion or tiger, I forget the family. But even in the study it said, but we cannot trace back to the time or the animal in which it evolved from. I said, I can help you with that. It didn't. But anyway, they were trying their best to put together, and I would think that in the day in which we live, it would take more faith to believe in evolution has changed and changed. That died, and then it just kept changing and changing and changing, and here we are. Wow, what's going to change after us? One man told me, no, we're the finished product. And I said, by whose definition? Who said this was the finished? Evolution is supposed to be ever-changing and evolving. I said, so what are we? And he said, we're probably going to evolve into AI, artificial intelligence with computers in our bodies so that we won't have to die. Well, I can tell you this, scientists are monkeying around with things that they ought not. They're getting into a realm of trying to create life forms. Somebody sent me a video some months ago that they were trying to create a half human and half child. Now, if it wasn't a real video, they did very good in making a believer for me. And it was awful that scientists, doctors, whatever they're called, are trying to change what God has created. And if they're going to try to use something of that nature to say, look, evolution is starting to change, we sometimes wonder how we can have a living faith that accepts even our scientific methods today. The definition of faith is given to us to grasp on, to hold on to, Number two is the recognition of faith. Look at verse two. It said, for by it, faith, the elders obtained a good report. The Hebrew writer, which I believe to be Paul, and we can differ on that, has declared that by faith the elders, those who walked with God prior to the provisions of Calvary, obtained a good report. These men and women of God were pleasing to God and found it acceptable to him through faith. As a matter of fact, the remainder of this chapter is so beautifully put together as we consider it the heroes of faith or the hall of faith. It deals at length with the faith of certain individuals that are given to us in the scriptures. These were not approved of God by keeping the law, for they tried, or even specific ordinances. They obtained a good report of faith in God. They willingly walked away from the world, abandoning their lust and pleasures to the flesh, and they allowed themselves to follow God without fear or favor, to follow him by faith. They were justified by faith, the same as we are today, being acceptable to God has always been obtained through faith. Listen to what James chapter 2 says, verse 23. 
And the scriptures was fulfilled which saith, Abraham believed God, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness. And he was called the friend of God. Well, tonight, Abraham was declared righteous by God because he believed God and his faith secured acceptance of God being justified by faith. Now, Ephesians chapter 2, as I mentioned earlier tonight in our beginning, verses 8 and 9 said, For by grace are ye saved through faith. This is how our beginning was. And that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, thankfully, simply because not of works, lest any man should boast. And would we boast if we could? That's humanity. That's our nature. Faith is an essential element in salvation, but it's not limited just to salvation. God is pleased when we respond to the offer of salvation by grace through faith, but he also expects us to maintain our faith as we walk with him in this life, hopefully and prayerfully maturing in our relationship. We start as babes, and then as we leave the milk of the word and get into the meat of the word, we begin to mature and grow in our strength and our relationship. Faith enables us to endure the difficulties we face and it strengthens us for this journey. It prepares us. It gets us ready. Look in verse 9, if you would please, Hebrews 11. This is talking about Abraham. By faith he sojourned in the land of promise as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked for a city which hath foundations, watch this, whose builder and maker is God. He needed to hold on something when he was called to go and search, and he went without any provocation whatsoever. Look in verse 17, if you would please. Verse 17 says, By faith Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac, and he, had, and he that had received the promises offered up his only begotten son. Now, that had to be tough. But by faith, he followed. Look in verse 19. According, excuse me, accounting that God was able to raise him up even from the dead, from whence also he received him in a figure. He had a promise of a miracle child at the ripe old age of 99. That's not exactly your childbearing years. How would you like to reach 65 or 70 and all of a sudden, surprise, you're a daddy. No, we should be a granddaddy. But I'd say, well, miracles still exist. Now I'm going to need another miracle to give me patience to be able to raise this child. Boy, that'd be a time. Look in verse uh, 24. Hebrews 11, verse 24. By faith, Moses... When he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Faith had literally given him a sight, and I'm going to show you what it is. Esteeming the reproach of Christ's greater riches than the treasures in Egypt. And he absolutely knew what the treasures of Egypt were all about. For he had respect unto recompense of the reward. By faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king or the Pharaoh, for he endured as seeing something. Now what was it? As seeing him who was invisible. It helped him to turn away from everything he knew and was comforted in that life. His position, no doubt, was about to afford him as the next Pharaoh. 
but he got a glimpse of our Lord. He got a glimpse of a greater future, and he looked at all that he had, and he said, no, this is not where my happiness lies. And he turned and walked away, literally broken man, but he was out searching for what God's future would have for him. Let me give you another verse of Scripture. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 6 and 7. The Apostle Paul said, Therefore we are always confident. Now you heard that statement. Knowing that whilst we are at home in this body, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. So it's our future that we hold on to that produces us a continual work. We know there's a greater end to all of this. And it's not just the grave. We know for assurance I have been by enough bedsides of those leaving this life and the joy they expressed were quite wonderful, exciting. As a matter of fact, sometimes they'd even make us nervous by saying, do you see that person sitting there? And I'd go, not exactly. Well, they're sitting right there. And I said, how are they dressed? Well, the man has a brown suit. The lady has a dress. This lady said, are you telling me that you don't see them? And I went, no, ma'am. I do not see them. Well, that's all right. They've come to usher me home. And all I kind of did was wanted to give them plenty of room what they needed. Faith says you can see if you're looking. Faith says you can believe if you know assuredly that it comes from God. The Bible tells us not to put faith in man, and we can understand why. There's not much... I would like to say everybody tells the truth all the time. But that's not always possible. So hopefully and prayerfully as we go down life's highway, living by faith, there's things we look for, there's things we hope for. Number one was the definition of faith. Number two, the recognition of faith. Number three, the illumination through faith. What is it we can see? Tonight, we must bear in mind that these words were divinely inspired nearly 2,000 years ago. At that time, they didn't have the benefit of space travel, satellites, and even great telescopes. We don't understand the wonders of creation, but today we can be able to see through satellite technology some of the greatest uh, telescopes. As a matter of fact, I think just a few weeks ago, they uh, finally, after 10 years late, they finally sent up the James Webb Telescope. And one of the things the scientist says, we can see the beginning of the Big Bang. I thought, so that's what you spent. I think they said $10 billion dollars and it's exactly one million miles away from the earth. So they're trying to look past our sun and the other galaxies, and they want to see that spot that went, that started everything. I'm thinking, I could have saved you $10 billion. You didn't have to go that route to see the things that you're trying to see. We can see the sun, we can see the moon, we can see the stars and the heavens, but they didn't have the benefit of the dollars and the research to confirm the things that we see. I love the simplicity of this statement of faith itself through faith. The believer understands without doubt or question that God created the vast universe by the word of his mouth. That's simple. I can just hold on to that and believe it. The things that we experience in this life, all of creation itself was formed by the one who Moses said was invisible. He absolutely spoke it and it 
perfectly happen. The sovereign of the ages spoke all this into existence and that is believed and received by faith. Now, I'm not a scientist. I know that's going to be hard for you to believe. I can't begin to explain the complexities of the human body, and neither can scientists. They can't understand the complexities of just the brain and how it works so wonderfully. We can't explain the vastness of the galaxies or the orbit of the planets or even the molecular structure of DNA. But I know the one who created it, and I can tell you about him and all that exists that makes up his wonderful love and nature. I can't explain the existence of God. People ask the question, where did he come from? I said, he's never been anywhere to come from. He's always existed. Faith doesn't always require explanation of physical evidence. Faith stands alone as the evidence is bas basically necessary. If he were a God who could be defined and figured out, listen, he would not be worthy of our worship because he is far greater and majestic than we can possibly imagine and I trust in him and I believe in him by faith. I can't even explain today the holiness that a sinless God would be willing to adorn himself in a robe of flesh, come to this earth, live in poverty, suffer ridicule and rejection, and die as the, sub the substitutional atonement for sin. I can't understand why. But by faith, I believe it and I accept it. I can't fully explain all that transpires that our Lord takes a sinful heart of flesh at an old altar. Now listen, how he absolutely transforms that heart into a new creation, one that now can love and forgive and have a new life of faith and insight of trusting and believing in someone they've never physically met. But they've met him all right. They've seen him who is invisible. By faith, I know the Lord has gone away, but by faith, I know he's coming again. He's promised, and he said, and when I go, I'm going to prepare a place for you. I'm excited just about seeing him, much less the place that's prepared. Being with God anywhere is heavenly because wherever he is, it's going to be wonderful. The world may think we are foolish to believe what we cannot show them in physical form, but I'm settled in my faith like you are and very certain of my salvation. I can't hold it in my hand. I can't show you the physical aspects, but my faith is more certain to me than anything in my life. I told my brother one day, I said, I believe in the existence of God and his, sal his salvation more than I believe I'm standing here talking to you. I said, I could be dreaming at the house. But I said, I have more faith. He said, you're crazy. And I said, yes. Whatever you term it, I believe in the existence of our God to come into this world and allow himself to be sin that we could be free. Number four, this is our last one, the expectation for faith. Look in verse six again. This is where we uh, left off reading. It says, but without faith, it is impossible. I think we understand what the word impossible means. It is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God by faith now, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. 
So you can't find God if you're not looking and searching with all your heart. Jesus said, if you search for me with all your heart, you'll find me. So somebody who plays games with God and, and just says a sinner's prayer is probably not searching for God. Because if all you have to hold on to is the words of your prayer, you don't have much. This statement we just read in verse 6 declares that we cannot possibly please God apart from faith. Those who come to God being received by him must believe by faith that he exists and that he is the source of all the blessings. What did we sing tonight about the blessings of God? Those blessings are for those who diligently seek him. This does not refer to a casual faith or a faith that comes and goes. It speaks of a living and active faith in God. Such faith compels us, listen, it compels obedience and it desires communion with the Lord. We want to know more of him, we want to walk closer with him, and we cannot possess genuine faith apart from fellowship with Christ. I'd like to say, when's the last time you had a good, hearty talk with your Lord? For some strange reason, he woke me up about four this morning. And I'm not much of being a morning person, but I was completely wide awake. And for some strange reason, I was compelled to just cry out to God, praying for I wasn't sure what. But I just felt so compelled that this is what I needed to be doing at this moment. And I prayed and I prayed and I prayed. And in my heart, I was thinking, well, I don't know if I'll be attending any more sleep. But I knew there was something going on because this doesn't happen every day. Our lives are shaped and molded by faith. And I hope and pray today it's the faith that we possess. This is what we have. If you want to please God, enjoying his hand of provision and guidance in your life, exhibit faith in him. Let it be seen, let it be known, because it's impossible to please God apart from faith. But by faith we are assured of his goodness and his grace. John said this in John chapter 6, verse 28 and 29. Then said they unto him, What shall we do? Now watch this. That we might work the works of God. Jesus answered and said unto them, This is the work of God. Now watch this. He's going to give them an analysis. That you believe on him who he hath sent. You mean that's it? They said, Well, we want to know how to do the works that God would be pleased with. Jesus said it basically starts with you believing on me, you trusting me, and that did not go well with them. Let's conclude with this thought tonight. I hope tonight that we have somewhat of a better understanding of faith and a greater appreciation for its benefits in our lives. Faith is the assured guarantee of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. By faith, we see beyond our current circumstances to the glorious future that's been prepared for us. I don't know why people have cancer. I don't know why people are suffering through so much pain and discomfort. But by faith, they believe and trust in the one that is their creator, their savior, their soon coming king. They believe he has the best interest in their lives. I believe even for Sister Stephanie, she had some of the greatest faith as we seen and heard about her healing or going on to heaven. She was pleased with any of the outcomes. Now the family said, no, we want you to stay. And she said, 
Whatever pleases the Lord, that's what I want to do. By active and living faith, we honor and please the one we serve. So here's the question I got for you. Where is your faith today? How strong and influential is your faith? Or is it weak and lacking? Are you just enduring through this life? Or do you have a living faith? If your faith is weak, I know a Lord that can increase your faith. The apostles even said, Lord, increase our faith. I wish he would have said, why don't you use what you have? Because we have enough faith, honestly. If a mustard seed faith could move a mountain, how much faith does it take to walk through this life? Where is our faith? Maybe we have to yet go through some trials and tribulations that we might experience how strong our faith is. The first time your faith gets tested and when the bottom seems to fall out of your life. And then we find out what we are made of, how strong we are. Do you know it's easy faith to live in for God when everything goes well? The car's running perfectly, the bills are paid, the lights are on, the air condition is cooling, the heater's working. Man, it doesn't take a lot of faith when everything is just so smooth. But you let a little thing trip up Power goes out, the refrigerator's not working, the air condition goes off in 95 degree heat. We panic. We're going into some real problems here. Nowadays, it's not the electric we have to worry about, it's the internet. When the internet goes down, oh my Lord, what are we going to do? How can we survive? I can't get nobody. Oh my fault. Either shake your head or say amen or oh me. Maybe our faith does have to be tested. You'll never be able to explain what childlike faith is and the finished work of Christ that leads to salvation. I can tell you about it, but I can't explain the details. The Bible tells us that we are to repent, come away from that which leads us astray, and turn and make a good walk toward our Lord. By faith... Some to salvation and some to rededication. And I want to tell you tonight in closing, if Jesus don't come soon, we'll have to experience another kind of faith, which is called dying faith. I remember a man sitting here at the piano. Uh, he wrote Beulah Land. Brother Tom Hayes, am I correct? Who? Who? Okay, I'm talking about the writer. If I'm correct, Brother Tom Hayes was here because I remember him giving a little introduction that when he wrote this song. So you're right, Squire Parson did sing it, but I believe, if I'm correct, Brother Tom Hayes wrote it. And as he was sitting at the piano, he said, all of us believe and trust our faith, but then we're terrified when we have to use dying faith. He said, I hope and pray that God will comfort you in the times of sorrow and pain, not just in difficult times. So our faith at times goes up and down, goes up the mountains, down in the valleys. And boy, while we're in the valleys, boy, we're reaching and holding on faith and said, but you said. And can I say tonight, it's okay to remind God of what he said. He wrote it. I just have to say, Lord, you said that if I would come to you and believe in you and trust in you, that you would bring these things to pass. So we're to pray not only for healing, but we're also to pray God's will be done. So faith, I hope it's alive. I hope it's living in you. I hope it's growing in you. And not because of trials and tribulation, I hope it's growing because you want a closer walk with our precious Lord. He's worthy to have us stand side by side with him and to follow his every movement. Hebrews, a great, great book, but Hebrews 11 
sure gives us some great detail of those who have went on before us and they stood the test. They hung in there. Their faith was living, expressive, exciting. And then one day, you had to help them across to the other side. I hope and pray that God will teach us the kind of faith that verse 6 says, this is what it takes to please God. So without faith, we're just enduring and struggling. So may God teach us to live by faith. Some people believe you can only live by faith when you can't do nothing else. Living faith is a beautiful picture of I trust God and I'm willing to prove it. Amen. All right. God bless you. Uh, let's.